Hello. So in this video, we are going to be covering the vertical line test, which is sort of a graphical way of seeing if a graph represents a function. So as a quick reminder, right, a function is this sort of equation that has this following property, right, this extra property where each input has exactly one output. So if we think about, right, looking at a graph, we have our sort of nice little curve on here that represents some f of x. And we think of this as like right, you have the input, the x values, and the, the y put, the, the output, which is the y values. And if we look at a given x value, right, like our tick mark here, we sort of go up until we hit the curve and look at the corresponding y value, right? If the x value is a, the y value is b, this gives us a point on the actual function, right? So we have the point a, b, or sort of equivalently, f of a is b, okay? So this is an example of a function. And specifically, the idea here is that my one, my one x value, my a, right, has exactly this one y value, b. Now, it might not be clear sort of how this would not be the case, because we usually only draw functions. So by way of example, let's look at sort of an explicit version of this where we have something that isn't a function, sort of spectacularly so. So let's say that we have this other thing here, this oval that is represented by g of x, right? So our curve is now this, this big oval bit here, okay? And similarly, we're gonna look at that a value as our x value and look at what the corresponding y value or values might be. So if I go up, right, if I go up from that a value, I could hit this b as the y value, and I could say, okay, well, g of a is b then. So far, so good. It's basically the same as the f case, right, where f of a was b. But the problem is, is that I don't just sort of hit the curve if I go up. If I go down, I'm also going to hit the curve, right? And that's going to get some other y value, some c value, right? So b could be something like 1, and c could be something like negative 1. But the x value is the same. So on the one hand, if I went up from a, I'd get 1 or whatever. And if I went down from a, I'd get negative 1, which meant that that means that sort of for that one input, that, that a value, I'm going to get two different outputs, the b or the c value, depending on which direction I go. Okay, So this would be an example of sort of the graph of a curve that is not a function. So how do I tell, right? Sort of how do I look at a graph and know immediately, sort of quickly and easily, whether it's a function or not? Well, it comes down to exactly sort of the option that I've just mentioned, where when we look at A, we're going to go up and down and sort of form a nice line along that x value. So in particular, right, g of x is not a function because when I look at the vertical line, right, for f, the vertical line goes through and hits that one curve at that one spot b, but in the case of g, that vertical line goes through and hits two places, right? The part that corresponds to this b if I went up and the part that corresponds to c when I went down, okay? So this sort of gives rise to the vertical line test. The vertical line test says that if there's any kind of x value such that when you make this vertical line, right? So if there's any x value like a here where you have a vertical line going through that value and the x, that x value, that line going through it, intersects the graph more than once, then the graph doesn't represent a function. So because we hit the curve in more than one place along this line, this one is not a function. Whereas over here, if we hit, we only hit the curve sort of one spot, no matter where we go, and that's why this one would represent a function, okay? But the key here, the sort of easy to miss part, is actually this part about if there's any x value. Because what that tells me is that I have to test sort of all of the x values to see if any of them fail. And it's possible that it might fail in only one spot, okay? So let's look at an example here. So let's say I want to test the, this function to see if it passes, like if it's an actual function or not, right? And again, because it's a graph, the easiest way to do this is through using that vertical line test. To me, the sort of way that I envision using it is that I start by drawing the vertical line on one side and sort of radar sweep across looking for if I hit the curve in more than one spot, okay? So I start by drawing my vertical line somewhere on the edge, like in this case on the left, right? 
and then I sort of sweep it to the side and look for if it hits somewhere more than once. So it just sort of starts sweeping across, and then, ah, I found a spot where it hits more than one part at one time. In particular, it's hitting this, this point up here because it's a closed dot, and this point down here because it's also a closed dot. So I want to zero in on that spot because I've now hit the curve in more than one spot along that one x value, right? This x value, whatever this x value is, has hit that y value and that y value. And because it did that, according to the vertical line test, that tells me this is not a function. So even though it sort of works everywhere over here and everywhere over here, it doesn't work at that one spot. And because it doesn't work at one spot, it's not a function, okay? All right, so what did we talk about? We talked about the vertical line test. It's this way of sort of doing a quick sort of vertical line radar sweep kind of thing of a graph in order to see if that graph represents a function or if it's just some sort of vague relation thing, right? And we, we looked at a couple examples, like that first curve of that f of x was a function, but that oval bit was sort of spectacularly not because almost everywhere that, that vertical line is going to hit more than one spot. And then we had that last example where there was only one spot, right, where it, it hit more than once, but that still tells us that it's not a function, okay? So that is that. Thank you.